The Avro Vulcan was a tailless, delta-winged, high-altitude strategic bomber. It was operated by the British Royal Air Force, and was one of the three V bombers. In 1947, Specification B-3546 was issued to aviation companies, which called for a medium-range bomber land plane, capable of carrying one 10,000-pound bomb to a target 1,500 nautical miles from a base anywhere in the world. A cruising speed of 580 miles per hour at between 35,000 feet and 50,000 feet was required. The 10,000-pound bomb was specified as a special gravity bomb, a freefall nuclear weapon. The aircraft was not required to have any defensive weapons. Avro was one of the companies that submitted technical brochures to this specification. In April 1947, Avro began working on Avro 698. Avro did not think a conventional design would be able to satisfy the specification, and decided a delta wing configuration would be suitable for their bomber. This would make the aircraft much lighter. The delta wing would also increase the stability, and a tail would not be necessary for the design. The initial design had four large turbojets stacked in pairs, in the wing at either side of the fuselage. Outboard of the engines were two bomb bays. In August 1947, the design was revised and the engines were placed side by side in pairs on either side of a single bomb bay. In January 1948 two Avro 698 prototypes were ordered. To test the Delta Wing, Avro produced the Avro 707, which was a one-third scale model. The first 707 flew for the first time in September 1949, but crashed later the same month, killing the test pilot. More 707s were produced, but they would play no part in the development of the Avro 698. Wind tunnel testing resulted in redesign of the wing to allow higher maximum speed. The first Avro 698 prototype, the VX770, flew for the first time August 30, 1952. It was powered by four Rolls-Royce RA3 Avon engines, although the initial plan was for Bristol Olympus engines. The first name considered for the Avro 698 was Ottawa, but the name Vulcan was picked after the Roman god of fire and destruction. The second prototype flew for the first time in September 1953. It was more similar to the production aircraft, and was fitted with Bristol Olympus 100 engines. Some redesign of the prototype became necessary, to remove some undesirable flight characteristics while approaching the limiting Mach number. The first production version B-1 flew for the first time in February 1955. The first 15 production B-1s were powered by the Olympus 101. The Vulcan entered service in the RAF in July 1956. In July 1957, more aircraft entered service, now powered by the Olympus 102. To extend the B-1 service life, aircraft were upgraded to B-1A standard between 1959 and 1963. This included the addition of ECM equipment, as well as in-flight refueling receiving equipment and UHF radio. All B-1As were withdrawn from service in 1968. The work on the Vulcan B-2 was initiated in May 1956. The B-2 was to be able to achieve greater heights over targets, and operational flexibility would be extended by adding in-flight refueling equipment. ECM systems were added. The first B-2 first flew in September 1958, and was fitted with Olympus 200 engines. The second B-2 was more representative of a production aircraft, and used Olympus 201 engines. It had an in-flight refueling probe and a bulged ECM tail cone. From February 1956, the Vulcan B-2s became capable of carrying the Blue Steel missile. When the Blue Steel missile was cancelled, the fittings were changed to be able to carry the Skybolt missile. Later aircraft were delivered with the more powerful Olympus 301 engine. The B-2 would remain in service until 1984, and was continuously updated. The Vulcan entered service in the RAF in September 1956. Vulcans routinely visited different parts of the British Commonwealth as a show of support and military protection. During the Indonesia-Malaysia confrontation, Vulcans trained in the region for both conventional and nuclear missions. In the early 1970s, the RAF decided to permanently deploy two squadrons of Vulcans overseas in the Near East Air Force Bomber Wing, based at RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus. They were withdrawn in the mid-1970s. 
The Avro Vulcan initially carried Britain's first nuclear weapon, the Blue Danube gravity bomb, supplemented by US-owned Mark V bombs. Later, British Red Beard tactical nuclear weapons were carried. During its service, the Vulcan also carried a number of different nuclear weapons, including the Violet Club, Yellow Sun Mark II and the Blue Steel Missile. The Vulcan was also used in a conventional role. It could carry up to 21 1,000-pound bombs inside its bomb bay. The aircraft type was only involved in combat missions during the Falklands War in 1982. These missions have become known as the Black Buck missions. Vulcans took off from Ascension Island to reach Stanley on the Falklands. On the way, the Vulcans had to refuel from Victor tankers. On the first mission, a single Vulcan destroyed a runway in Port Stanley, making it unusable and enabling Sea Harriers to conduct follow-up strikes. More missions were flown and targeted radar installations. On June 3, 1982, a Vulcan broke its probe while attempting to refuel, forcing it to make an emergency landing in neutral Brazil. The Vulcan was also used in the maritime reconnaissance role, and six Vulcans were converted to single-point tankers. The Avro Vulcan was finally retired in March 1984. In total, 136 aircraft were produced.